experiment time. Today I'm adding different amounts of salt to my sourdough breads, and we'll see what difference it makes in the sourdough making process and the final bread. Are you getting salty? Hi, I'm Sunu, and I'm a food geek. Today I'm going to see what difference varying amounts of salt will do when you bake sourdough bread. Salt is said to tighten the gluten structure, so it could make a huge difference in the handling. The plan is to make three loaves of bread. One with 1% salt, which I think would be the very least amount of salt you could use. I remember when I first started out making sourdough bread, where I baked a bread that had no salt in it at all. Honestly, that's the only time I binned a bread. It tasted really bad. The second bread is the control with 2% salt, which is in the range that I usually use. The third one is taking salt to the extreme with 3% salt. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. My goal is to show you how to get the most out of every ingredient and I want to teach you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. The bread that I'm baking today are 700 gram loaves with 80% bread flour and 20% rye flour. The hydration is 80% and the inoculation is 20%. I use this basic formula as my experiment bread. That means you can even compare breads across videos because it keeps many of the variables the same. If you're interested in the three formulas that I used, I've linked them in the description. If you'd like to support the channel, please buy some merch or you can use the links in the descriptions for tools and ingredients, or consider becoming a Patreon, which I'm linking in the card above. Thank you. Those were the words. This is the experiment. Since these doughs have different amounts of salt, I'm building each dough separately. First, the dough with 1% salt. Then the dough with 2% salt. And then the dough with 3% salt. Then I leave them all to rest for an hour to let the water and the flour get to know each other. Then I start bulk fermentation by doing three sets of stretch and folds. The first set of stretch and folds. The second set of stretch and folds. and the third set of stretch and folds. The 1% dough isn't ready yet, so it goes back for another 30 minutes. In this case, I'll just let it follow into the fourth set of stretch and folds. I'll do the same for this one. Then the fourth set of stretch and folds, Now all three doughs are looking good, so they go into the bulking containers and into the proofer set to 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The fermentation time was equal on all three doughs as when they grow 25%, I pre-shape them.
and let the dough rest on the counter for 20 minutes. And then I final shape them. And after they're shaped, I put them in the fridge and let them retard for about 18 hours. Now it's time to bake. First, the 1%. And here it comes out of the oven. Pretty boy. Then the 2%. That's looking mighty fine too. And then the 3%. Well, 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 another looker. Let's have a look at the crumb, the 1%. That's looking great. Time to fill all those holes with butter. Hmm, butter. Then the 2%. That's very nice too. Then the 3%. This is great as well. Well, let's have a sniff and taste test. They all smell the same. Mmm, it's good. A little on the bland side, but still tasty. Mmm, this is really good. Just pure taste of bread. Damn, somebody fetch me the water bottle. I love these experiments that play with your assumptions. To me, 
There was no difference in the handling of the dough at the different salt levels. The dough wasn't tighter or different to work with. The one with 1% 1 salt was maybe a tiny bit more slack than the other two. Also, uh, the rest seemed the same. Same kind of oven spring, same crust, same crumb. Now where it did make a difference was in the taste. The 1% was okay, a bit anemic in my taste, but I'm sure people who watch their salt intake would be happy with the spread. The 2% was normal to me. You didn't taste any saltiness, just delicious crusty chewy bread. The 3% was a thing of its own. You could absolutely taste the salt and depending on the application, it's delicious. As a side for a soup or a casserole, it'd be great. As an appetizer with just some delicious butter, it would be outstanding. Whether you'd eat it or not is up to you, but consider the reason why restaurant food is much more delicious than home food. It's because they add more salt. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.